Stimulus is mostly used to simulate the hardware signals, but it is possible to use stimulus to inject data into and trace data out of general purpose registers to verify correct algorithm operation. This session will last about 15 minutes. We will go through the steps to use register injection and register trace. We will also guide you through the user interface. At the end of the session, you will know how to define and apply injection and trace capabilities. Let's look at some of the words we'll encounter in this session. Stimulus. This is, in general, the simulation of hardware signals that affect the operation of the firmware. It also applies to the injection and tracing of data for peripherals that are data-based. For example, the ADC, UART, SPI, and general purpose registers. There are two kinds of stimulus in the simulator, synchronous and asynchronous. We are only going to look at one part of the synchronous stimulus. The word synchronous simply means that the event is tied to an operation that occurs during the execution of the code. Everything is defined and activated in a window called the stimulus window. There are six tabs on the window in which you can define both the synchronous and asynchronous stimulus. The stimulus settings can be saved into a workbook file for future use. Register injection stimulus is the attaching of a data file to an SFR or GPR register so that data can be injected into the application. Register trace stimulus is the attaching of a data file to an SFR or GPR register so that the data can be traced out of the application. Here is a screenshot of the stimulus window. All stimulus is defined and used from within this window. The buttons to activate and deactivate the synchronous stimulus are apply and remove. The save button allows you to save the stimulus setup defined for future use. Here is an overview of the steps to use synchronous stimulus. Stimulus is only available for the simulator. So before you can use stimulus, you need to load the simulator debug tool by selecting Debugger, Select Tool, MPLAB Sim from the menu. Next, select Debugger, Stimulus, New Workbook from the Debugger menu to bring up the stimulus window. Alternatively, you can use Open Workbook to load your existing stimulus definitions. Click on the appropriate tab of the stimulus window to configure the type of stimulus you desire. You may save the defined stimulus at any time into a workbook by either clicking on the Save button or selecting Debugger, Stimulus, Save Workbook from the menu. This step is optional, meaning you don't need to save before using the stimulus. In order to use the synchronous stimulus, you need to click on the Apply button. This takes all the defined synchronous st stimulus on all the tabs not just the one in focus, and creates a schedule which is then integrated into the simulator engine. It is important to note you need to keep the stimulus window open during simulation. However, it can be minimized. Next, run, step, or animate your application under the simulator debugger. At any time, you can reset the simulator as if resetting the device. This will reapply all the defined synchronous stimulus to repeat again from a simulation time starting at zero. At this time, all injection data files are reloaded and all trace data files are opened for write, so any previous data in the trace file is deleted. When you have completed the simulation operation, and if you are tracing data to a file, you need to click the Remove button to terminate the stimulus. This will cause any file operations to close the trace data files so they can be saved under another name or inspected for verification. Note that during simulation, either by stepping, 
animating, or running, the trace files are opened and stay open even when halted. For other applications to view these trace files, it may be necessary for them to be closed, hence the step above. The injection files are read into the RAM buffer on reset, so changing the data in the file after reset or during execution will have no effect. There are six tabs on the stimulus window. The first five of them are for synchronous stimulus and the last is for asynchronous. Each tab of the stimulus window looks like a spreadsheet. Below the header, each row represents a different stimulus definition. Each tab of the synchronous stimulus provides a different use of stimulus. Look for future webinars that show the use of the other types. This webinar only uses register injection and register trace. In this diagram, we are focused on the register injection tab where there are three register injection stimulus definitions. The first column is optional, label. This must not be the same as any symbols within the source code. The next field is the register or symbol, i.e. variable name, that the data will be injected into. Following that is the type of trigger. This can be demand, message, or PC equals. Demand means a new value is read from the data file when the register is read within the firmware. For the ADC, once a conversion is complete, the simulated ADC module reads the value from the file and places it into the register location. Message means that the file is formatted for UART injection allowing for delays to be inserted between messages. This type is limited to UART receive registers. PC equals means a value read from the data file and placed into the register when execution of the firmware is at the defined PC address. This is the type of trigger that is used on all general purpose registers. The next column is used in the case of a PC equals trigger and contains the PC address. This may be selected from a list of symbols or by entering a specific address. The width column is used to specify the size of the GPR so that the operation can transfer the width of the object to receive the data. For SFRs this is a fixed width. The data file name is where the defined data file is specified and must exist. Wrap is used to specify if you would like the data file to operate in a circular buffer of data. If it is no, the last value read will remain in the register. Format allows the data file to be specified in hex, a decimal, decimal, raw ASCII, SCL or packet. There is a final comments column should you have some brief notes that you want to place in this spreadsheet. In this diagram, we are on the register trace tab. There are three register trace stimulus definitions. The fields on register trace tab are very similar to the register injection tab. The first column is an optional label. Again, this must not be the same as any symbols within the source code. The next is the register or symbol variable name that the data will be traced from. Following that is the type of trigger. This can be demand or PC equals. Demand means when a value is written to the register, the new value is written to the trace file at the same time. PC equals means a value is written to the trace file from the register when execution of the code is at the defined PC address. The remaining fields are identical to the register injection tab but associated to the traced data.